Hello, everyone. My name is Sharon Halpin, and I am the Director of Financial Aid at Lemoyne College. I'm going to spend, oh, I hope, only about 20 minutes talking about financial aid. Um, I am going to take myself off of the screen so you can see the screen in full. So hold on just a second. I'll come back at the end. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about financial aid and the first thing I'm going to go through is just the timeline, what you do, when you do it, that type of thing. Um, fall is your college admissions, um, call, uh, admissions process. You're hearing from your guidance counselors, you know, what to do, when to do it, applying, submitting transcripts, all that. October is when you fill out financial aid applications. Um, you do not need to wait from admissions before you file for financial aid, and we'll talk about which forms to complete. Between February and early April, you're going to receive financial aid notifications, uh, financial aid award letters uh, that you'll get from uh, any school that you've been accepted to, that you have done their process. You've, you've filled out the forms they asked you to fill out, and we'll talk about that. Uh, so far, uh, as long as uh, things remain approximately the same, May 1 will be your date for deciding which school to attend. Okay. Uh, briefly, and I'm not going to concentrate on this, but briefly, um, your academic scholarships, uh, whether or not the scholarship offer, a school offers scholarships strictly based on academics, um, that would be, um, uh, you know, just your grades, uh, you know, your whatever you might have been involved in. Um, if the school offers these, they usually have information about it on their websites, uh, ask, whatever. Athletics, I will not talk about that today. You're probably in touch with your coach. Excuse me, I had a sip of water. Um, and we'll, we'll not talk about that. Um, local scholarships through your high school, through your employer, or your church. Uh, I would recommend that you get in touch with your guidance staff at your high school to find out how your particular school lists scholarships available to students from the high school. Okay, what we're going to talk about today is need-based financial aid. You're filling out forms, you're uh, giving us financial information, income, that type of thing, and uh, you're being awarded financial aid based on your income situation, income assets, size of your family, who's in college, that type of thing. Um, break that down very briefly. There's federal grants, there's federal loans, there's federal on-campus work study. There are state grants such as the TAP program and the Excelsior program. And there's also college grants, each, you know, uh, schools that offer grants from their own resources. Basic formula, what does it cost to go to school? What you as a family can afford? Is there a difference? Do you have financial need? We're always looking at the family as being the first source of funding. What applications to fill out? Okay, uh, if you are attending a school and 99.9% .9 of the schools in the country will want you to complete a FAFSA, free application for federal student aid, done online, studentaid.gov, available October 1st, 2020 for the 21-22 school year, okay, so for next fall. At the end of that application, the FAFSA, you will have an opportunity to go straight to the New York State TAP application, um, which is the state grant application. If you miss it, there's a separate way, and I have a, a slide that shows you how to apply for that. Um, if you don't do it through the FAFSA. Um, CSS profile, this is a form that some schools will want, but not all. Um, the CSS profile will ask you for additional information that is not provided on the FAFSA to um, determine uh, eligibility for aid from the particular school that you're attending. Um, my general rule of thumb is the more expensive the school, the more likely you will need to fill out a CSS profile in addition to the FAFSA. It's not a separate, it doesn't replace the FAFSA. 
It's a separate form in addition to the FAFSA. Uh, SU uses the profile. Uh, I'm sure U of R does, Hobart does, um, RPI. As you can see, I'm naming some of the more expensive schools in Central New York, Cornell, um, et cetera. You can find out from each particular school that you're applying to whether or not they want the profile in addition to the FAFSA. So you file the form at studentaid.gov after October 1. You're going to do this each year. Um, when you do the FAFSA, you are allowed to list up to 10 schools on the FAFSA. Um, I hope you're not applying to more than 10 schools, but if you are, you can list those 10 schools and then um, the process after about two days, uh, maybe three when the FAFSA has been processed. If you have school number 11 or 12, you can go back on to your FAFSA at studentaid.gov. You can take a couple schools off, put the other you know, two or three, whatever you're missing back on. Um, the schools you originally listed on your FAFSA have received the information, so there's no harm in taking them off because um, the information's already been sent to the school. I am not going to go through the FAFSA today, but I do want to point out a couple uh, areas uh, where uh, students seem to get uh, a little bit hung up. Um, number one, please, please be very careful that when you complete the FAFSA that you have social security numbers accurate, date of birth, and the name. Um, the FAFSA will actually check that you are a U.S. citizen against Social Security records. They will do that by comparing your Social Security number and your name and your date of birth. They will report to the school that you are a U.S. citizen or eligible non-citizen. If you mess something up, they will, you know, just require extra steps. So be careful. Um, the FAFSA is signed electronically. Both the student and the parent will sign the FAFSA using an electronic signature. Think of the signature, it's your signature. So the student has a signature, the parent has a signature. Um, it's called your FSA ID, and you will need this every year and for many other federal loans and grant steps. So write this down in a safe place. The student will have a user ID and a password, and mom or dad will have a student uh, uh, a user ID and a password. Okay, again, I'm going to touch on a couple things that uh, seem to ask for a lot, of, a lot of questions on the FAFSA. Obviously, I'm not going through it number by number. Um, you do include your savings on the FAFSA. Um, you know, 529 plans. I will note that the 529 is listed under parent savings, not student savings. You do list uh, your savings, not retirement. Um, you would not include your retirement plans or your home equity in your primary residence. Okay. Um, very important. I have a lot of families that will put their retirement uh, uh, savings on the FAFSA under the savings uh, section, not included. Um, there is a spot where they will they will ask you for your uh, contributions to a 401k uh, in this past year, but not all the accumulated uh, earnings from previous years. As far as the household goes, I do want to point out that it is the custodial parent that fills out the form. If the custodial parent is with the you know biological parents still together, those both incomes go on the form. If the biological custodial parent is remarried, then it's the step parent's income that's included on the FAFSA. Um, the directions are in the FAFSA. It's pretty clear. If you have any questions about that, you can feel free to call the school that you're applying to and they can walk you through that. The CSS profile, I'm going to touch on briefly again. Some schools are using it, not all. Um, it, they will ask you for information that is not required on the FAFSA. They will ask you for your home value. They may ask you for retirement in income. They may ask you for uh, what type of a car do you drive. You'd be amazed. Um, this is a form that's used to award college aid uh, 
Colgate, Hamilton, uh, Hobart. It's their own money that they're using this form to uh, to uh, determine eligibility. It, it's again, it's not a substitute for the FAFSA, and it is a form that it costs money. I'm not sure how much. I'm thinking it's pretty reasonable, maybe fourteen dollars, fifteen um, a piece, maybe less, but you know, not not crazy. As far as TAP goes, um, I just want to briefly touch on New York State TAP. This is a grant that's been around since the mid-60s. Um, it's for New York State residents attending a New York State school. You can uh, complete the application uh, at the same time you do the FAFSA or later, uh, tapweb.org if, if you do it later. Um, it's right now, the income they use to determine eligibility for a TAP is a New York State taxable income. So after deductions, after exemptions, um, 80,000 or less, you're eligible for at least the minimum award. So we encourage you to do the application if the New York State taxable income is 80 or less. I will briefly touch about Excelsior. Um, I don't know a lot about this program, but uh, I think I can give you enough to get you started. Um, it is free tuition at SUNY and CUNY schools. Those are New York City schools. Um, it does not cover fees. It does not cover room and board. Um, as far as I know, for the 21-22 school year, they will use an income limit of 125000 um, if your other federal grants, Pell and TAP, already cover your tuition, then you're not going to get an award from Excelsior, okay? Um, and the application is going to be done the same place you do your TAP application. Okay, what happens when you send in all this information? You've done the FAFSA, you've done the profile, you've done uh, anything else the school has asked you to do as far as answering their questions. You can expect to receive financial information from every school that you've been accepted to. And now it's time for you to study things, make sure that um, you understand um, what you're being offered. You will find that some schools will give you more money than others. Um, so this is where you really need to, uh, to look carefully. Um, um, some schools have more money. Uh, some schools will give students that are stronger academically more money than students that are not their strongest applicants. Um, some schools have very large endowments. So if you have, you know, five, six schools that you've uh, applied to and been accepted at, you will have five letters to sit and compare and, and, and come up with the bottom line. Um, I always say, do the math before you make a decision. I do want to touch on loans very briefly because this seems to be a common question. The federal government does allow students to borrow student loans. Um, the um, freshman amount for a student is $5,500. Students who are sophomores can borrow $6,500. And juniors and seniors can borrow $7,500. This is a combination of loans that are subsidized and unsubsidized. Subsidized being interest-free while you're in school. Unsubsidized accrues interest while you're in school. Um, but I think the important thing to know here is that these are the limits that a student can borrow in their own name, no co-signer, no credit check. Um, this is, you know, the federal government trusts that the student will uh, pay this money back when they graduate, but this is all they will give you without parent involvement. If you're looking for ways to pay the bill, options, to pay the bill beyond what the financial aid is offered. The federal government does have what they call parent loans plus uh, that a parent may use to help them pay the bill. There are private loans for students. Uh, many of your larger lenders and credit unions offer 
private loans, uh, you will need a co-signer. The students are, you know, we're talking about students who are 18 to 22, 23 years old, no jobs, uh, significant jobs, no credit, no collateral. The only way they're going to get these private loans is if they have a co-signer. Almost all schools offer uh, monthly payment plans. If you have a bill and you want to split that up, it's easier for your budget. You can do something on a monthly payment plan. So just to, to briefly go over some of the, the things, reminders, you do need to do your FAFSA every year. Um, if your situation has changed from one year to the next, make sure the school knows about it. Um, you know, we've had quite a crazy year in 2020, obviously. Um, when you look, when you complete your FAFSA, it's going to be with 2019 income. 2020 was as crazy for you as it is for, for many of us. You may have had a drop in income, and if that's the case, you want to notify the school directly. Um, Again, do the math, study your award letters, ask questions. Um, make sure you know what the college costs before you commit to them. You will have your award letters before you need to pay a deposit. Remember back on my timeline, the first screen, um, you're applying for financial aid in the fall, you're getting financial aid award letters uh, mid-winter, February, March, May 1 is your deadline for making a decision. So you do have the information you need to make your decision. Um, uh, you know, what's, what is it going to cost you? Have time to ask, ask questions and get answers. Um, I also have on here a few of the websites that you're going to use, studentaid.gov for not only filing the FAFSA, but it's really expanded. Um, you can view, um, you can apply for the parent loan there. You can view after you graduate, your student loans are going to be available to view there. Lots of information. FSAED.gov, FSAID.edu. This is where you can um, um, uh, fill out or uh, take care of establishing a user ID and a password. You can do this at the same time you do your FAFSA or you can do it ahead of time and get it done. Um, whatever you choose, just again, write it down. Um, tapweb.org, this is to complete the New York State TAP application. And I've also listed the hesk.newyork.gov. And that is a, a website that New York State lists all of their scholarships. Um, they will explain the Excelsior there. Um, they have a couple different, several different scholarships for various majors. Um, so you might want to just take a, a glance out there. Okay, um, I am going to say goodbye. Um, usually at this point, I have a chance to ask uh, you if you have any questions, and I apologize for um, um, not having that opportunity today. Um, but if you have questions, always feel free to call your uh, financial aid office at schools or uh, check in with your guidance counselor if you have questions. If they can't answer most of them, they can. They've been doing this a long time. But if they can't, um, they can um, certainly give their uh, people like me a phone call and, and sometimes I'll help them with some of your uh, more detailed questions that they're not used to. So um, good luck. I think this is being recorded. So if you missed anything, you can uh, probably go back and, and, and take a second look. Um, thank you for letting me take the time and, and, and review this with you. Have a good day. Thank you.